next Austin Faith Dialogue, brought to you by the Austin Metropolitan Ministries. In the weeks ahead, you will see these and other programs by various denominations. In the foothills of the Texas Hill Country, where the bluebonnets grow, lives Marbridge Ranch, a place in the sun, a place where the mentally retarded can aspire to heights beyond their wildest dreams. Today on Austin Faith Dialogue, the Marbridge Foundation is featured. Please join us. This is Austin Faith Dialogue, a public affairs program discussing the important crossroad of religion in life, produced by Austin Metropolitan Ministries in cooperation with KTBC-TV. Austin Faith Dialogue highlights the interaction of the religious community with the social and cultural issues throughout our area. Now, today's edition of Austin Faith Dialogue. Hello, I'm Richard Thompson, pastor of Central Presbyterian Church, and your host for this edition of Austin Faith Dialogue. It began as the dream of two special people, as parents of a son who was developmentally disabled. Ed and Marge Bridges were faced with a typical dilemma, how to find a program that would help their son grow more productive and develop skills and self-esteem. Their dream and their search came to fulfillment in 1953. They never found the perfect program for their son, Jim. Instead, they made one. Forty years later, the Marbridge Foundation is a thriving program dedicated to the care and training of specially mentally disabled citizens. It's a program that's based on the principles of faith, love, and work, and it's a program that does work. Today, our guests are two of the people who helped make the Marbridge Foundation such a special experience for its residents. Scott McNulty, director of music at Marbridge Ranch, and Lois Fluger, volunteer. And we welcome both you folks to our program. Thank you. Thank you. And I think that uh, we'll begin just with a little sense, Marge, you've been in this, uh, connected to this for quite a while. Tell us uh, how long and what you've been doing there. Well, I've been involved for approximately 30 years. My husband is the president of the foundation. I did work at Marbridge for about five years as a secretary and have been volunteering ever since. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're uh, volunteering in a particular way at this time? Primarily at the villa, which is the nursing home. Uh, my mother is a resident there, and there's just many different ways in which you can help in that facility. Mm -hmm. I understand that there are several aspects to the facility. Can you just outline that for us? Uh, in the Austin area, there are four facilities. One is a permanent residential facility for the mentally retarded. Uh, then we have a rehabilitation unit which is connected with the TRC, Texas Rehabilitation Commission. We have a halfway house or and that's a residence for the uh, residents that were, are able to work in the community. Mm -hmm. They are self-supporting and uh, have held jobs for many years. I see. And the final section there is the villa, which is a nursing home. Mm -hmm. uh, What's the age range of folks that are there? The re ranch facility, they can come as early as 18 or when they have completed their, school, their schooling through the public school system. And I believe my mother is the oldest resident and she's 94. Oh, is that right? Yes. Uh-huh. Well, um, the final perspective, just on the organizational side, is I understand there are there's more than one of the facilities in the Marbridge Foundation statewide. Yes, there's a facility in Houston and one in Abilene, mm -hmm. and the one in Houston, the one in Abilene, and also Maybe Village, which is the halfway house or community living center, is uh, they are both they're all three of them uh, co-ed facilities. All right. Mm -hmm. And uh, all together uh, in, in the Austin facility, there are how many people resident? In Austin, there's about 250. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that gives us a, a good synoptic picture of it. Uh, and Scott, you're connected particularly to the music part. Right. We have uh, six choirs at the ranch, uh, men's, women's, rhythm band, handbells, a uh, mixed group of both men and women. And each of these groups have a chance to perform in the community, uh, in uh, nursing homes and churches. Um, in fact, we've recently done a, a concert for the Down Home Ranch in Elgin, Texas. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, tell some of the other places that you've done concerts. 
goodness, all the churches, Hayes Hills Baptist Church, Manchac Methodist kind of helped us get our start. Uh, mm -hmm. Woodlawn Baptist has been awfully kind with Jack Burton as the pastor. Um, uh, Temple Beth Israel, uh, St. George's Court, which is a, a retirement community. Um, mm -hmm. They love to come down for our Christmas program every year and pick out some poinsettias especially. Sure. And uh, we have on the set today some flowers from the the greenhouses, and I think that uh, we're going to have a chance to talk a little bit about the special place that plants play in the whole mm -hmm. program. And I, I think it's going to be well to get a little bit of a pictorial view of uh, the, the ranch. I understand that you've brought some slides here, and that uh, let's take a look at, for instance, uh, first of all, we'll be seeing the chapel uh, exterior and interior view, and you can just comment on that as we look look at these. We have a, a weekly de non-denominational uh, church service that includes both the Christian and Jewish faith um, as best we can. Uh, many of our six choirs are singing each week, whether it be the handbell choir or the singing choir. The interior of the chapel you can see, um, wonderful cross. Most of, in fact, the building was designed by one of our residents' uncles, Jack Wood, and many of the residents and staff helped to build this facility themselves. So there's a lot of personal pride in it also. Um, what I love about it is the stage area, nothing is glued down and we move things around, whether it's a musical or a funeral service or we've even had weddings in there, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, we try and make the best use. The windows on the side are wonderful. Uh, lots of colorful pictures that don't necessarily even need the words that are showing, but on one side shows the Old Testament story of Noah and the ark and the other t uh, side shows New Testament with uh, the life of Jesus. I see. Then, then we have the uh, scene of a gazebo here. Once again designed by a staff person, Marcus Shoemaker, and built by another staff person and many residents. This is a favorite spot for some of the villa folks to come out and hang around after supper meeting people. I don't, I don't know whether the women actually pick up the guys there, but they, they, like, to go <laughs> they like to gossip kind of the picket fence. A, of a social gathering. Right. Place. And the, then the one in a series of on the greenhouses. One of uh, 14 greenhouses. Chris Winslow is the inspired director of that. Uh, as Lois has mentioned, some of the residents work out the community. Uh, many of them also work in the greenhouse and help to keep this operation going um, by planting seedlings. Uh, Point says are started in August, and by the 1st of December, they uh, will be a wonderful red. Mm-hmm. Okay. Last year they sold over 20,000 poinsettias. Um, here we see some of the other plants, the non-flowering, the ferns and uh, mums that are in season. Lois, help me out on these. You can describe them better than I can. Well, each of the seasons, of course, have their special time. The spring of the seedlings are a very, very popular thing. Right now the mums have just about gone out, but the poinsettias are going to be beautiful. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we have um, the villa. You spoke of that before, Lois. Again, the villa is the nursing facility. <laughs> was designed so that as our residents became older and were no longer able to work in public, they would be able to have a permanent home. It is not a nursing home as we often think of a nursing home because it's a very, very active place. Okay. They have dances and they have crafts and painting and all types of, of activities. Speaking of crafts, we have uh, three uh, pictures of artwork here. Tell us about those. We're not sure whether this one's by Morris Knutson, one of our uh, residents there, or Ann Smith, but there are many talented folks. Diana Aston um, and Susan Tiffey helped to coordinate all the crafts and the activities. This is a fairly recent thing that they've gotten into, uh, painting plates um, and selling these to folks. Mm -hmm. um, also, we, I think we'll see some paintings coming up also that are kind of early America country art of sorts, sure. but just mm -hmm. beautiful, and especially when you realize that it comes from the heart. It's not something that is, is done, uh, the, the satisfaction with, with which these people right. show after right. they finish this, it's wonderful. Then the corral, what does that represent? <laughs> the growing horse population. <laughs> Those are miniature horses, mm -hmm. and uh, it is a new project that we've just gone into, and we'll be raising miniature horses. Mm -hmm. If you haven't seen them, they are absolutely precious. The little colts, when they're born, are approximately 15 inches high, and at full 
height, they are about 34 to 35 inches. Wow. For and those of us that are afraid of horses, that would be a way to, <laughs> right. to go. Huh? There are also the several full-size horses in yeah. another stable. Mm -hmm. Maybe Village. What is this uh, house? Actually, this is a group of about 10 houses. Um, we're seeing the entryway at this point. This is the halfway house of the folks that work in the community. Um, vans are very popular with this group since we're just outside of city limits and bus service doesn't yet come to our place, but the vans take them to um, their work situations and uh, about 100 residents there. <clears throat> okay, so these are the ones who are out in the community rather than working on the properties. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Some of them work on the property, but most of them are out in the community in, in uh, grocery stores and country clubs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Restaurants. Restaurants, yes. yes. Uh, quite a few working in restaurants as yes. well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I have to come back to the plants because I think in the public's mind this is what is most associated with Marbridge Farms is the annual poinsettia uh, sale. Uh, you're saying that it goes beyond that a good bit and and why is there such an emphasis on that what how does that relate to those who are mentally retarded in a particular way well when you start thinking about growing plants there are so many facets in growing them uh, starting with the just filling pots with dirt it's not a glorious job but it is an accomplishment we have one resident that is a CP can barely get around. He's in a wheelchair. A CP meaning? Cerebral palsy. Okay. I'm sorry. All right. And, uh, but he is thrilled to death because <laughs> today I'm going to go work in the greenhouse. He's a very independent gentleman and it may take him 45 minutes to get his wheelchair from uh, the villa because he is in the nursing home to the greenhouse. You know, this is a quarter of a block, but he's going to push it himself and he goes down and he works in the greenhouse he fills pots with dirt or he puts two seeds in a pot <laughs> and so it's then they go from there all the way to the point that they are selling the plants to the public and being able to work in a public situation what makes the plant special is that the folks themselves that are involved are so very involved it's not just um, a work situation for them but it's it's a way of life in that they see other folks around them that in so-called normal society that are working hard and they want to be a part of that and for them to be productive in this way not only in the greenhouse but in the other work situations gives them a sense of pride that that um, is very warming mm -hmm. and very touching for those of us <clears throat> so it's a particularly appropriate form of work for people with this particular condition. And uh, I, I know you said before the show that there was initial attempt to do something else in terms of activity and before you came to the plan idea. Well, the greenhouses originally started out to be tomato hothouses. Uh -huh. And that's a disaster because they are so ticklish. It required a great deal of staff time and work, but there wasn't a great deal that the residents could do. And it did not prove out to be Mm -hmm. worthwhile for us. Sort of a trial and error way of finding That's what it correct. was that was going to work. There's been a great deal of that <laughs> over the years. <laughs> I remember one Christmas where uh, one of our residents was playing a handbell in the Christmas program and because of his movement he was having difficulty to to uh, ring the bell and our system is that when I point to someone they they ring these handbells and make the sound well, every time I point to him he would make the motion but the bell would not sound mm -hmm. and very quickly we turned the handle this is during the 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 actual performance of the piece and all of a sudden he was able to ring the handbell and the smile that came across his face was incredible. <laughs> I'll never forget that right, Christmas. Right, right. Uh, a way that we're all finding our ways in, in different circumstances. Mm -hmm. and that's a beautiful story. We're going to uh, take a break in just a moment and uh, when we come back we're going to be looking at and hearing the uh, Marbridge Choir singing uh, chorus, uh, Alleluia Chorus. As we enter this Christmas season I think that'll be a particularly fitting way in which to enter it. Stay with us. Serving Austin means serving you. Each day, Austin Metropolitan Ministries is religion in action, providing affordable housing, caring for the elderly, marching against hunger, and much more. 
AMM promotes understanding, cooperation, and social involvement. So when we ask for your help, we're really asking to help you, Austin. To find out how you can help Austin Metropolitan Ministries help Austin through its member organizations, just call 472-7627. Hallelujah, indeed. We're just delighted to have that shared with us today, and I think that, uh, Scott, you might just, you know, on the basis of what we've seen, tell us a little bit more about uh, what the music means for the people who participate. Well, in one respect, it's therapeutic in that it offers uh, people a chance to do things like uh, work and memorization, um, which we find helps in the other aspects of their lives. Um, for me, it's a spiritual aspect, um, seeing these guys attempt music that that folks wouldn't expect them to do. Mm -hmm. As I was mentioning uh, during the break, this group performed uh, parts of Handel's Messiah with an eight-piece orchestra last year. And to watch the faces of individuals uh, was just truly inspiring and mm -hmm. meant more for me at Christmas time than opening presents did later on. I see. Well, I, I think that uh, the, the one thing that strikes me too is that you not only perform like in the chapel, as we've seen here, but you've, you're out in other churches and uh, didn't you indicate uh, to me a little earlier about the uh, going in other places in the community? Right. We love to, to have invitations to come out to sing. Um, we've gone to uh, nursing homes, to churches. Anyone that'll ask us, we will was come out. Was it the state capitol that you sang at? That was, at, that was the uh, Crockett High School. I have to mention them. Uh, Fred Ratliff is the choir director. Um, we would love to sing at the capitol. <laughs> so if the governor's watching, then, then maybe we'll get an invitation <laughs> okay, after this. Okay, all right. <laughs> Well, I think that uh, your being out and about is, is good for the public and it's good for those who uh, are coming with your group. Many of the groups go out uh, weekly with town trips or visits to Rio de Janeiro, New Mexico, where we have property cabins, to the coast, to Rockport, to uh, hunting season, which is a big favorite, mm -hmm. uh, to town shopping. 
and taking the choir out on trips was, was a natural thing for us to do. Also, it builds character, it builds uh, camaraderie. The choir is the biggest group on the campus uh, where the most folks are involved at one particular time. Okay. Many of the other groups are smaller in, in numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, coming back, Lois, you had something you wanted to say about the, uh, the plants again? Yes. One of the programs that has come into the in being this year is there are a group from one of the elementary or junior high schools here in Austin, that special education class that comes out to the greenhouse every morning and they work in the greenhouse. It is, again, a part of the training that they get through the uh, public school system. Mm -hmm. So it's not just people on, uh, on the campus, but uh, people are coming in from the outside as well. That's right, yes. Right. This was a special... Uh, treat for this year. We encourage as many people to volunteer with us um, to be involved so that they see that our folks are just like everyone else. They want to be loved. Uh, many times I'll come onto campus and have four or five people come out and give a hug. Mm -hmm. And that is it's a wonderful thing for them to be sharing not only to the staff but to folks uh, off the campus. I see. I wanted to uh, <clears throat> return for a moment to uh, Ed and Marge Bridges the founder. I think I may have called you Marge earlier. I'm <laughs> beg your pardon. I'll answer to it. Uh, That's a compliment. <laughs> but uh, these uh, these people are still with us and uh, involved. Celebrated their 65th wedding anniversary a year ago. Yes, very much. In fact, he still works in the office. Mm -hmm. Very, very active and, and affectionately called Papa Bee and Mrs. Uh, Mama Bee. Mama Bee. Mm -hmm. And where, where did the Mar and the Bridges come in? Mar is from Margie, mm -hmm. and the Bridge is, of course, from the Bridge. Oh, I name. see. Mar so that's Bridge. just, all right. It's a combination of her first name and their last name. All right. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that the, uh, the fact that it has uh, lasted as long as it has and not just survived but prospered is indicating that it's, it's meeting a real need and it's, uh, it's got a, a good future to it. Private, not public, but it's a private institution, non-denominational. Um, is is a testament to the Bridges who back in 1953 couldn't find what they wanted and started this. Mm -hmm. um, it really is a testament that it has lasted this long, both through financial crises, um, lack of support, uh, not enough education in the field, mm -hmm. uh, and they've helped to bring more education to it because of this kind of a success. Now there are some state funds that are available in terms of supporting individuals there? Yes through TRC uh, and then through Medicare and Medicaid there are some public funds okay mm -hmm. but it's but that would be on an individual basis not to it's the not institution the itself not to correct. the institution right. itself that's correct um, as far as cost it's one of the lowest um, costing institutions in the state of Texas mm -hmm. as far as uh, amount of tuition that each student pays so and and the greenhouse helps support that as do other programs yeah I was thinking that must be a, a good money raiser in terms of an ongoing source of revenue it's, it's a huge um, profit-making venture that is done to support the institution mm -hmm. rather than just for, for greed alone. It yeah. helps well, make the other programs survive. Right. I, I think, too, that one of the things that you may have received support from are the area churches. Is that to give us a, an indication of the relationship to congregations? Would you like to go on? <laughs> <laughs> Since I'm involved on in a weekly yes, basis, as I mentioned earlier, we have a, a non-denominational chapel service each Sunday afternoon. Um, Tom Hager from St. John's Presbyterian, Kim Cape from Manchac United Methodist, uh, David Fetter from Abiding Love Lutheran Church, David Sweet and uh, Carmen Ravello and other folks from Hayes Hills Baptist Church. We've had Rabbi Stephen Fulberg from Temple Beth Israel, Father Paul McCallum from St. Paul's Catholic Church. Um, there are many, many more folks that come out, give their gifts. In fact, a few weeks ago, a, a choir from Northwest Baptist Church in North Austin came out. Ron Davis is their director. Um, it's, it's a give and take. We, we love to go perform at their places, but then we also invite their choirs mm -hmm. and their pastors to come be a part of our worship experience. So that interface with the religious community is an important one. Very much so. Um, in many ways, these folks are as spiritual or more spiritual than some of the rest of us. I have one gentleman, uh, I'll call, his, his name is Ronnie, and he went to the doctor and he asked the doctor if he could hear God inside his heart when he put his stethoscope up to his chest. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's exciting because there is a wonderful understanding about who God is and how God is involved in our lives. 
and we see it every day how they act and what they say. All right. And uh, can you add to what the, the religious dimension of this uh, work is? Well, I think that was the, really a, one of the big founding ideas is that it be a community where God was central. And I think God has led the Bridges and the entire staff throughout these 40 years uh, because this is just, there's just no way that we could have, have accomplished or that could have been accomplished without God's guiding hand. Mm -hmm. you, uh, <clears throat> you've been around long enough in this uh, to know that uh, you've, you needed some help of uh, more than just a human sword. Yes, mm -hmm. many, many ways. Right. I would like to state to also that the activities that we offer to the residents are very, extremely varied. Anything from sports to travel and eating out, you know, that's a, that's that's a, a big favorite. plus <laughs> right, right. Uh, in, in various, um, various ways. But we do take them on a lot of to a lot of activities. UT football games are a big favorite. In fact, you'll see a yeah. group of about 40 folks at every football game that's in town. Mm -hmm. uh, arts and crafts also. There's a wood mm -hmm. shop as a part of the premises. Um, indoor swimming pool, miniature golf, horseback riding. Oh uh, my word! Uh, it's just uh, a social gymnasium. <laughs> it is. It is. I'd like to, uh, before our program ends, to uh, provide some information for viewers about. Um, they want to learn more about your work. Uh, there's a number that they can call. And um, also, uh, are, are we too late in the year to talk about uh, the poinsettias and if people want to come and avail yourself of what you have in that way? No, they do have the uh, store at the, at the ranch, uh, which is just west of Manshack. The poinsettias are available, but I would ask you to not wait too long because they will sell and they'll sell fast. Mm -hmm. They also specialize in Texas native plants year-round so that there will be other plants in addition to poinsettias out there. Okay, so 282-1144. That's correct. All right. Well, I, um, I think, too, that if um, people want to do more than just come out and avail themselves of the plants, if they want to help out in one way or another. There's are volunteer outlets there. That Many volunteer outlets of all types. Anything from reading, um, taking them off campus on various occasions <coughs> with staff, baseball, football, basketball, bowling. But there are just so many, many ways that we can use volunteers, mm -hmm. uh, both on a very active and a very sedate manner. Right. What about in the music side? Are there mm -hmm. volunteers there? Always. We can always use volunteers. We find that the volunteers who do come out uh, think that they're giving a gift and they're actually receiving one. All right. It's a two-way street. Definitely. Yes. And uh, I think as we uh, come to this final moment of our reflections, I want to thank you, Lois and Scott. Thank you. And thank you, folks, for looking in today. And as, uh, as they have shared the Marbridge Foundation work with us, and how it benefits actually the whole community. We can wish that Marbridge continues to grow and flourish and continue to be a way in which we can have our ear to the heart of God. Amen. I'm Richard Thompson, thanking you for watching and inviting you to be with us next week. In behalf of Austin Metropolitan Ministries, peace be with you. Call Austin Metropolitan Ministries at 472 7